Who is excited to test a $70 foundation versus a $20 foundation? That is what we're testing today. I have the new CoverGirl Simply Ages Skin Perfector Essence and against the tried and true and beloved Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Tint. So if you are interested in seeing a side-by-side -side, half and half face comparison of these two foundations, if you're seeing to hear my thoughts on it, a full day wear test, all those things stick around and we will find out. Hi guys, my name is Dana and I am doing a wear test on these two foundations. If you have seen anything on my channel before, you know that I have a long time love for the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Tint. This is one of my very favorite, very light, um, low coverage foundations. It's very moisturizing, it's light, it's all the things, but it's also $70. And then CoverGirl just came out with a new one, which is the Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence, which, if you can see, looks very, very similar. We've got the suspended pigment in both of them. Um, let's see if you can see from the side. There we go. And basically, we're gonna be testing it out. I'm gonna be putting half the CoverGirl on one side of my face and the Chanel on the other side of my face. I'm gonna be wearing them all day today. I'm gonna do check-ins, kind of see how they hold up, that kind of thing. And then I'll let you know my final thoughts at the end of the video. Now, I do wanna preface this by saying there are a few other products that have this kind of suspended pigment. One is also by Chanel. This is the Le Beige Water Fresh um, Touch, Complexion Touch. And then there's the Rose Ink one. I'm not going to be comparing those two today just because they're a little different, especially this complexion touch from Chanel. This one is more medium coverage. You're just going to get a lot more coverage out of this, so I don't find that it's the best comparison. But then the rose ink one would probably a little be a more comparable test. But that said, I prefer the Chanel over the rose ink, but if you prefer the rose ink, then you could kind of use that in place of the Chanel. I do have a video where I did the rose ink versus the Chanel Water Fresh Touch tint sorry so if you're interested in kind of figuring out the difference between the chanel and the rose ink go check that out but you can interchange the chanel and the rose ink if you want okay all that said so i want to put these on my face so they have enough time and then i'm going to go throughout my day and kind of wear it so let's get into it okay a few words of prep. I have tried this a few different ways and I have had some big major fails and then also some times where it works out. Now with the Chanel, I feel like it always kind of works under any base. So maybe that's a plus, but maybe I'm just not remembering correctly. But when I tried the CoverGirl one the first time, I put it on over the Supergoop Unseen sunscreen, which is a very heavy silicone, clear kind of um, almost like a primer type of sunscreen and it did not work it basically like wouldn't stick to my face i had patches on my cheeks where it just was rubbing away and i couldn't put any more on anytime i would use a brush or my fingers or a sponge it would just rub the product away so i have changed tactics the first time i tried it with a the madagot what is it skin 1004 this is the centella sunscreen and then today i have it on over the super goop triple prep which is a cream sunscreen slash moisturizer and it's been sitting for probably like 10 minutes or more the other thing i want to say about it is it does kind of it is a little picky i think for how you apply it I used to put the Chanel on with my hands and I would kind of break up the pigments in my hand and that still does work. But I think what I found is a flat type of like kabuki brush is the best. I'll put it on my little palette, my white barn palette. You can put it on the back of your hand, but basically you do have to break up the pigments before you put it on your face. I've tried it with other brushes. What my favorite is this Real Techniques 405 brush and I didn't like it as much. I think you need this kind of flat top kabuki to work. So those are kind of the two little nitpicky but very important things that I wanted to say before I started applying it. Okay, now I'm going to apply. One pump on my white bottom palette <laughs> and then I break it up like that and you can see what it kind of looks like. see what it looks like on the brush as I break up the pigments. Okay, 
So this is what you can see how much coverage. This was about a pump and a half, probably didn't need that much, but I feel like it always kind of, the coverage doesn't stick as much around my cheeks. So I tend to go in with a little bit more, but then I also go with a sponge pretty much always um, just to make sure everything's blended out, but also to pick up any excess product. So you can see that you get quite a bit of coverage and it just gives you kind of the nice, like even tone that I did not have before. And now I'm gonna use a different kind of style. Now I'm gonna use another clean Kabuki brush with the Chanel Watercrush Touch on the other side of my palette. <laughs> Okay, so right now I've put two pumps of the Waterfresh Touch on with about a pump and a half of the CoverGirl. And you can tell that there's quite a difference. I would say the CoverGirl, you're definitely getting more coverage. The Waterfresh Tint, it's really about as sheer as you're gonna get. I mean, I, there are sheer coverages, but it's just that wash of color. It also feels a lot more hydrating. Like I feel the water presence in it versus the CoverGirl, which feels a little bit more like makeup. What I'm gonna to try to do now is I wanna build up the coverage on the Chanel side, just so we can kind of get about an even coverage, um, and then we'll check in after that. Okay. So we built up, so they're about the same amount of coverage. The side over here is for the Chanel and then the CoverGirl. I will say if you want that kind of more light medium to medium coverage, you can build it up with the CoverGirl. I should put it on this side much more quickly. That was a pump and a half. Now, if I wanted to do my full face, I could probably do like two pumps, maybe a little bit more, and that would give you a substantial amount of coverage. Whereas the Chanel, it took three pumps to get to about the same amount of coverage. So you are gonna be using a lot more product if you want a heavier kind of amount of coverage. But that said, this, is, this product, especially the Chanel, is not meant for excessive amounts of coverage. It's really meant to be a sheer wash of um, coverage and just a little bit of pigment. But it is nice to see that with the CoverGirl, you can build it up a lot more easily. And I think that means that if you use just one pump and do it all over your face, you would probably get that sheer amount of coverage a lot quicker, but you also have the ability to build it up, which is very nice. For me, it kind of depends. Depends on the day, depends on my mood. I like to do sheer coverage, but I also do like, like light medium to maybe medium coverage these days. <laughs> and I found that they actually both applied really nicely, but I do think that the, the tips that I gave you are very important. This type of brush seems to work very well for both of them, pumping it out onto a palette, the back of your hand, breaking up the pigments first, and then also whatever type of moisturizer or sunscreen you use. I don't think those types of heavy silicone ones are gonna work because they're just gonna like, basically the product is gonna sit on top of the sunscreen or the primer versus this type of cream, sunscreen or moisturizer, then the, the two foundations can really sink into the skin a bit more. So those definitely helped me and I hope that they help you if you kind of come into something like that. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put on a pretty minimal face of makeup and then I'm gonna go about my day and then we will check in maybe throughout, but maybe at the end and see how they were. So I will see you guys later. Okay, some initial thoughts before I go about my day. So on the CoverGirl side, I have had some kind of patchiness and some spots that kind of the coverage will kind of start being removed if you use a sponge or a brush and try to like build it up. But I've also had that on the Chanel side. And I think what the thing is with both of these, they're not meant to be built up. So whatever you're gonna put on, it's probably gonna be easier when you're not doing like a split half and half side comparison. But when you do put it on, do your initial amount, however much you want, and then kind of be done with it. Because the more you try to put product on and build it up, it just kind of removes product and it's not gonna give you the look that you want. But I wanna kind of remind you that these are meant to be very low coverage, kind of a wash of color, not meant to be buildable in the sense of like a normal foundation. So I don't necessarily knock either one. I think it's more that like I was trying to build it up to see what I could get. 
And that's just really not what the products are. And they kind of both did it on the same sides, like right by my temple. So those are the initial thoughts. The other thing I did want to mention about the CoverGirl, I have the shade light medium. It pulls pretty light. So if you are looking at them, like this actually works for me for my winter shade, but I was thinking light medium would be a little bit tanner. Um, so they're going to be like a little bit lighter than maybe you're expecting. And then I also have the shade, I think medium light, but in the Chanel. So that is my summer or my winter shade as well. But overall, they kind of set down pretty nicely. I'm having more issues around my forehead and temples with both, but I'm gonna let them, you know, be and wait until the end of the day to kind of make my final judgment on them. But then again, the one other thing I did wanna add is the CoverGirl, you do get more coverage than the Chanel. This is really gonna be like that light sheer wash of color. This one is gonna have about light, maybe medium, light medium coverage, but I would say more like light to light medium coverage. So nice to note that they do have kind of some differences and they're not too, too similar. Okay, I'm gonna go about my day and I'll see you guys later. All right guys, it is like seven hours later. <laughs> I've had a full day. I went and got my nails done. This shade, can you see this? Um, focus. It's called Gemini and I from OPI and I love it. I just did one coat so it looks very like you know, effervescent. <laughs> and I tried the square, like a short square. I'm like, I've never tried short or square before and I kind of am obsessed. Anyway, that's not why you're here at all. Checking in at the end of the day, I did take a video on my phone. I don't think I'm gonna insert it because the light was just, I took it too late in the day, there was no light. But I'm looking at my face and besides some mascara on my skin, it looks so good. Like once it's set down, it really, really, really held its shape and form. And like, I don't find that it's transferring that much. I mean, I did put on a white hat just now, just because I got one in and it transferred. So it's not like not going to transfer, but I can touch my face. It's not moving. It feels very secure on my face. And then like the blush has stayed in nicely. I was saying on my iPhone video that I took that it rubbed off my nose that's not the fault of any of the either product my nose is just like constantly running and like dripping <laughs> even though i don't i'm not sick so i don't ever take you know i don't give the the foundation a hard time for that but otherwise it really really did kind of just like meld and mesh into my face i think the thing about it is there are a few things one it does have more coverage than the chanel Le Beige water fresh tint i'm just going to go out and say that it's not in a bad way. It actually is a really nice amount of coverage. And two, both of them really, you have to put them on over either like, I would say like dry-ish skin, which I don't ever do because I always wear sunscreen, or just not on a silicone base. Like the, the unseen sunscreen just didn't, it wasn't it. <laughs> and so once I got the hang of that, it worked out fine. The other thing is I do really like the Kabuki, like a flat top brush with these types of makeups. This one got like all indented, that's so weird. So that's another tip. And my final tip is to not really necessarily build it up. So think of it as your sheer light coverage and just do kind of one base level, base layer. You can use your hands, but I would recommend definitely breaking up the pigment in your hands before your face. I like the brush better. And then some type of either like cream moisturizer or sunscreen or kind of as little like of a, of a like base as possible. Those are my kind of three tips for it. Now, if I'm gonna get down to it, do I choose the CoverGirl over the Chanel Le Beige? I don't know. I mean, for me, I still think that this water fresh tint is, it's unique in the sense that like, it really does give you a wash of color and just like the most minimal base possible. Now you could probably get that same look and I'm gonna keep playing with this, I'm not done with this, by just using a little bit less and kind of spreading it over your face more, but it it's not exactly the same. There is a coverage difference. In terms of like the actual staying power though, I think they both do a great job and you can really get a beautiful look with either of them. So if you're in, you know, you just can't afford the $70, which is insane, I get it, no shade, no criticism there. This is a very, very good dupe. I really think this could be on a lot of people's radar and like really something that they kind of go to and gravitate toward more than this because this is so absurdly priced. That said, I am a sucker for Chanel products. 
I just love the way they smell. I love the feel. I do find that they are just a little bit easier to apply. Like there's, they apply over almost every product that I have underneath them. And that's probably because you're paying so much. <laughs> but I think if you want to just spend the $20, which is totally reasonable, this is a really good option. And I would go so far as to say it's a pretty close dupe. So yeah, keep those in mind, my little tips that I have learned from. And also keep in mind that the shade does run a little bit lighter. And then I think you're gonna be good to go. And yeah, I will link everything below. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you guys in the next one.